This week, the Supreme Court handed down a series of landmark decisions surrounding voting rights, religion, student loan forgiveness, and affirmative action. On affirmative action, the court's majority ruled both in a case brought against Harvard University and one against the University of North Carolina that the consideration of race in admissions violates the Equal Protection Clause of the Constitution. As longtime critics of affirmative action celebrate the victory, advocates now worry about the ramifications well beyond campus. NBC's Jesse Kirsch has our Sunday Focus. For years, affirmative action policies allowed colleges and universities to consider race heavily in their admissions decisions. But on Thursday, in two rulings, the Supreme Court struck the practice down. The decisions upending decades of legal precedent surrounding an issue that has ignited passions on both sides. I strongly, strongly disagree with the court's decision. But can now rejoice over the fact that at least our kids can be judged based on their achievements and merits alone. The high court itself also clearly divided. Chief Justice John Roberts, writing for the majority, said programs at Harvard and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill unavoidably employ race in a negative manner, involve racial stereotyping, and lack meaningful endpoints. But in her dissent, Justice Katanji Brown Jackson accused the conservative majority of let them eat cake obliviousness, adding that deeming race irrelevant in law does not make it so in life. I do think we can anticipate seeing a significant drop off in attendance for black and Latino students and Native American students, Native Hawaiian students and some groups of Asian American students. Danielle Holly, president of Mount Holyoke College, believes the Supreme Court's decision will make it harder to achieve diversity. And she says the ruling is not entirely clear. It's going to be hard for colleges and universities, especially these first few years. There will be lots more litigation. As people would say, there will be lawyers. What's the practical effect? Nine states have already banned the use of race-based affirmative action in admissions. And some research shows that enrollment of students from underrepresented communities declined, even when other factors such as class were weighed more heavily. But some critics of affirmative action say some well-intentioned programs have gone awry. When you start to evaluate people, almost explicitly and unilaterally via the use of race. What enters into the equation, I think, is a movement away from what we want in America, which is to view people holistically. Lan He Chen, a Stanford University fellow, says other specific admissions considerations, like special treatment for children of college alumni, also need another look. Think those need to go too? I think we need an examination of all, of all these policies, right? Uh, policies that create advantages as the nationwide debate unfolds, it's clear America is still sharply divided when it comes to issues of race. Diversity begins with me. An April NBC News poll found 53% of Americans agreed affirmative action programs are still needed to counteract the effects of discrimination against minorities and are a good idea as long as there are no rigid quotas. A separate Pew Research Center survey conducted around the same time found that only 33 percent approve of colleges and universities using race and ethnicity in their admissions decisions. The question now for admissions officers at schools across the country, what's next? And Jesse joins me now live. Jesse, good morning. So colleges and universities, as you say, have been preparing for this outcome, expecting it. So how will they now change the way they assess applicants? Yeah, Willie, good morning. Mount Holyoke's president, for example, says her team is going to focus on outreach to potential new students, especially those who may not be reaching out to the college on their own. That means telling students about financial support, ensuring applications are accessible. But the Supreme Court says schools can still consider an applicant's discussion of the influence race has had on their life. That essentially means you can talk about race in your essay. But there are questions out there still about how that works in reality. And that brings us to a point of actual agreement among some people on both sides of this issue. They're expecting more litigation as schools figure out this new reality. Willie? And a lot of discussion about what this means beyond campus, too, up into corporate America. Jesse, thanks so much. Fascinating look at this. We appreciate it. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.